Hello, welcome to DM Neurology MEDC. I am Dr. Ahmed Viraj and let us see how to do a DSA through femoral root. After palpating the anterior superior leg spine and the pubic symphysis, we locate the femoral artery. And locating the femoral artery within our fingertips, we give the injection or uh, that is the lignocaine injection and uh, at the various layers of Hebo. the uh, femoral uh, artery. And after giving the proper anesthesia to that region, we make sure uh, we are not uh, going directly into the artery. If there is blood coming out, uh, we have to, uh, we do not inject it directly into the artery, uh, that is especially the lignocaine, which is harmful. So every time you inject, you withdraw. Now with the puncture needle, 18, uh, 18 or 16 gauge puncture needle, we inject into the femoral artery, directing uh, towards the umbilicus at about 45 to 60 degrees. Now you can you could see the gush, blood coming out as a gush and after that we introduce the uh, uh, short guide uh, wire into the puncture needle and after that we make sure that we had gone directly uh, into the femoral artery because in this region there could be some anomalies or tortuosities and uh, so we have to make sure that the wire is going directly into the femoral artery up to the length and it joins into the external iliac artery. So here the, the upside down view the unfortunately uh, that the wire is going into the external iliac. <coughs> now after placing uh, th th that properly we withdraw the introducer needle or the puncture needle and we have that short guide in position. Uh, we had given a small nick so that the femoral sheath here we have used a six french femoral sheath to insert we insert with the help of a screwing movement here and after that we remove the sheath still still attend the sheath out and now we have got the proper femoral line uh, through the femoral artery and we see that whether the position is right and give double flush to this region double flushing as a technique to remove any clot or any uh, air within the uh, arterial system now i had given heparin injection so that the line is actually uh, not getting clotted in between during our procedure after giving heparin i had just now flushed the with normal saline now we insert the five french judkins right catheter or we can use uh, Simon's catheter, word, etc. to cannulate based on the age of the patient and the tortuosity we expect in this patient. It is not just the catheter being introduced. First, we use the wire. The wire should always go ahead in case of a uh, DSA. The wire should be about 10 to 15 centimeter ahead. Otherwise, it will act as a dagger. And here you can see the uh, fluoro image where the wire has been gone in front and the there is actually the catheter following it now after reaching the arch i had togged or just twisted the catheter and it had now directly gone to the right common carotid artery so, <clears throat> so now after removing the wire that is a 035 thermo wire which is used along with the five french Jetkin's right catheter. I remove the wire, then do a double flush again, and then with the help of the manifold, I have positioned the gantry properly, and now I am able to see the artery. So, different arteries have different locations. So, now I have injected in left hand and is oblique view LAO view and now you can see there is some abnormality there is stenosis uh, as well as some abnormality and stenosis along with some uh, aneurysm at the region of the stenosed region uh, stenosed uh, ICA at the proximal segment that was taken at the proximal ICA level at the cervical level now we take the internal that is at the uh, intracranial level this is the lateral view which I had initially taken. So since we are, I am using a 2D cath lab, 
தட் இஸ் அ யூனி பிளேனார் கேத்தில் ஆர் மோனோ பிளேனார் கேத்தில் வி ஹாவ் டு டேக் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் வியூஸ் செப்பரேட்லி இஃப் இட் இஸ் அ பை பிளேனார் கேத்தில் யூ குட் ஹேவ் வித் அ சிங்கிள் இன்ஜெக்ஷன் டேக்கன் both the lateral as well as the anteroposterior view simultaneously this is the anteroposterior view taken again which shows the ICA the MCA divisions and then we can see the ACA is not coming from this side so ACA is absent here so uh, when injecting make sure you give the injection dose simultaneously uh, in a uh, gush and wait for the arterial phase to come followed by the capillary phase then comes the venous phase now i rotate and uh, since there are some abnormality here i'll have to spend some time here to make sure what is wrong in that region because we are have, have to treat that this patient this patient had came with left sided paresthesias occasionally and occasional giddiness as well as ta like symptoms over his left half of the body so this is a symptomatic right ica stenosis so i am taking different views so if you tr- see the top region there is values so there is uh, just a 70.67 percentage stenosis in this region as you are aware according to ecst and acst uh, guidelines we have to go for stenting if there is more than 70 percentage stenosis but here the situation is much more graver because here the plaque is ulcerative and in between the ulcerative plaque there is a dissecting aneurysm in that region so how would you go about with this patient is actually a big question whether we have to go for carotid endarterectomy or can we go for a carotid stenting in this patient before coming to conclusion we have to see what are the flow what is the flow in other vessels in this patient so now i am taking different views so now i was giving a few check injections so check injections are just to see how whether the position is right whether different positions i am planning to say take is not having any overlap overlap before the actual flow uh, video video or dsa is being taken so we have fluoro image then a dsa image so this is the double flush technique in which first we uh, take the blood then uh, second syringe we take half of blood and inject back now the o3 5 wire has been reinserted so because we have to change the position now i am drawing it back to the brachiocephalic trunk now it has reached the brachiocephalic trunk so and i am trying to shift it to right cca but now when i am trying to shift it to right cca that is Uh, sorry left cca left common carotid artery i'm failing uh, so again it is going directly into right cca now it has di- uh, jumped into right vertebral artery so it has gone from right brachiocephalic trunk to the right subclavian and directly entered into the right vertebral artery so now doing the double flush technique again every 2 minutes we have to go for double flushing and because we are introducing wire catheter etc these are foreign bodies can have clots in between now i am connecting the manifold into that and now injecting now giving some test to see whether it is so this is the what is called test dose so i have given the test dose to see which artery confirming which artery it was so it was definitely the vertebral artery which i have said now i have positioned in the lateral view, view and now dsa is being done so this is a lateral view of the right vertebral artery now i'll be changing the view because there is no much abnormality all the three phases arterial capillary and the venous has been completed now you can see the position of the see i'm changing so now again i'm injecting this two injections i need because i am using the monoplanar cath lab most of the dsa labs have biplanar so injection has so each pressure how much pressure you give so you ha- can clearly see the right vertebral joining the basilar to the both pca and all the other branches are clear there is no aneurysm no abnormal uh, flow or abnormal collateral circulation notice here in this so sometimes this by especially while doing the vertebral artery make sure that our catheter is not 
hitting into the wall or piercing the intimal region for that this double flush also helps and after double flushing i am again introducing the o35 that is size a thermo wire now always insert manipulate the catheter only with the help of a wire otherwise there will be dissection the wire should be in front now i am coming back because i have finished right cca common carotid and right vertebral now i am planning to cannulate the left common carotid artery so i you know i am right now in the arch of aorta i am trying i know the rough position that is it is in, to the left of the spinal uh, spine of vertebra so i am just again it is going to right cc so the, i will try to torque by just pulling the o35 wire back into the ostium now i have cannulated the left common carotid artery so this is actually a real time video i have not edited or and, uh, cut cut any portions so we are continuously recording this video so i have entered withdrawn the wire and now double flushing again so don't forget about this double flush technique which could be very useful because otherwise embolic could go, go in dissection could occur air could air embolism could occur and cause harm to the patient with a simple procedure like uh, dsa which is used to prognosticate or plan what is to be done to patients now we draw the uh, contrast from the media cup uh, that is bottle and now you can see here there is not much problem because there is normal caliber and size of the left common carotid left internal carotid and normal external carotid now we'll go in and see how the intracranial portion of left ica is so intracranially we can see all the three faces arterial capillary and venous all are appears normal because all the branches are there and if you remember previously in the right cca the left uh, the right aca and the cerebral artery was missing here we can see that in this injection both the right aca is getting filled from the left ica injection so and again injecting yes so this is important because we know the pathology is over the right side but we have to make sure there are no collaterals or any extra collaterals there are no abnormalities over this side also because we are may plan uh, operation surgeries or corrective procedures in such patients and it's very important for that purpose so i have uh, given a test dose here now located the position now i am injecting so in this patient if you see uh, in that i ac region i am suspecting some ectasia of the some abnormality abnormal swelling at the ac region ac beyond the a2 segment so now i have to be careful because i shouldn't miss any aneurysm because an aneurysm in a patient could be multiple so we found an aneurysm but uh, that is a different aneurysm that is a stenosis with a ulcerative dissecting aneurysm but the patient could have multiple aneurysms so don't miss it so i change location and uh, position and again done a dsa to the a the aca segment after focusing over that region and found out that it was not an an uh, ectasia or aneurysm but it was actually a folding of the artery that is the ac artery so i am now safe Uh, so I am relieved that it's not a second aneurysm the patient is suffering from. Now putting the O35 wire back into the JR five front JR catheter, reaching, then coming back. Now I have to cannulate the left vertebral artery, which has a separate origin. Now I am trying by first drawing. Now going ahead into the arch and giving some torque for this patient uh, to, to the catheter and. Okay, it's a bit difficult. Okay, yes. So I reached the ostium. Now subclavian. It has gone to the subclavian. So I know that we know that the first branch is vertebral. So we draw, come back. We can manipulate both the catheter and the wire. Now the wire has gone into the left vertebral. You know that it goes in between the all the vertebral uh, vertebra, so all the six vertebra, to reach the top. so it has to torches cross but once it crosses it goes in through 
and the cathedral goes in it all straightens out all the torture city straightens out so i have reached the vertebral artery removed the wire i'm doing the double flushing uh, removed uh, and now inserting the manifold to push in the contrast so now left vertebral artery i'm doing the dsa so you can see this is the first lateral view for the left vertebral artery angiogram so first fluoro locate then now i am doing the dsa yes it appears pretty normal in this case so now uh, we, we again have to do a left vertebral artery angiogram in the ap view that is the anterior posterior view so we are continuing with that so again we have to inject it right all these procedures would have this type procedure time the contrast injection the num the amount of contrast injection would have been half nearly half and um, maybe less than even that if we had a biplanar cath lab this beautiful video was taken by mr lejo i thank all the cath lab technicians headed by dr mr anish I thank Dr. Muhammad Rafiq sir, Dr. Fasal Ghafoor sir, and Krishnada sir for teaching me intervention neurology and neurology at MES. We are almost done, so we are just moving. So in 16 minutes, we had completed uh, angiogram of this patient, and we took much more time because because uh, we had to take few more uh, views in case of the abnormal right ICA session. So thank you all uh, for viewing. So this. is to show that intervention is not that difficult for anyone um, so we have finished in 16 minutes thank you